10 reasons why not to buy real estate. And then right here, he's got only an idiot would buy a home in Mexico. I hate when people come to a country and they come to a city and they go for two days and they give a review on this city. It takes a lot longer than two days, two weeks, two months to really understand a city. I was in Rome for three days. I didn't like Italy. It's not that I didn't like Italy. It's just I had a bad experience there for three days in Rome, in one city, in one country. I cannot give any advice on that country because because honestly, I haven't been there. I was in a hotel for a couple hours. I went on a tour, had some so-so pizza, went off to Barcelona after that. My experience in Barcelona was better than my experience in Rome. But honestly, I don't know either of those cities. I just know those experiences. So you can have an amazing experience in the worst city in the world. If somebody comes to my home in Delso, Washington with me, I can show you a good time. But is it a great city? Yeah. Depends who you ask. Check out this nightmare experience that this American had investing in Mexico real estate. I bought a derelict house on the ocean in Puerto Aventuras and put 10 million pesos into it to restore it to glory. I also bought beach property around Mahawal, 20 hectares on Lake Bacalar, and a 2,000 hectare ranch that had been abandoned near Chetumal. We then went to work. We hired seven full-time employees to work the ranch in addition to protecting it from poachers. There's a 500 hectare lake on the ranch as well where when we we arrived, poachers were gill netting with 100 meter nets and destroying the fishery for generations to come. We stopped all of that from happening. You're saying that you went to a deserted piece of land. We're talking completely deserted. You're thinking you're not gonna have some problems? You think this is gonna be some easy little peasy thing? That's not the kind of type of investment property most people are buying. But this is like when you're trying to save the planet. Anyway, we're gonna continue. My ranch has been invaded twice, once by 10 men with guns who threatened to kill all the workers if they did not leave immediately. We called the police and what did they do? Nothing, nothing at all. It took one year and more than two million pesos to correct the wrong and get my ranch back from the thugs. Before you go buy land somewhere, let's make sure that it's not ran by other people and make sure that this land is actually land that you can purchase, okay? This land probably was being used by some people that don't want you using it. Now, if you had a good real estate agent, if you had any knowledge of the city, that's not gonna happen. The guy probably had some dipshit real estate agent who sold him land that really maybe legally was his, but there are other rules in Mexico and you need to know those rules. That's why you need to have a good real estate agent who knows not just the bullshit regular rules, but the Mexican rules as well. Years. Sure, I've won battles in court so far, but the would-be invaders are still on my property and I've spent over 200,000 pesos on lawyers. Will I win? Yes, but I have no desire to keep fighting this battle. Mexico requires me to keep spending money simply to hold on to those things that I've already bought and legally paid for. For me, the straw that finally broke the camel's back came last year when a Mexican bank known as Monex stole more than 20 million pesos from our accounts. We had money in the account one month and the next month bank employees had stolen every peso. This guy is a sucker. Literally probably every country in the world has scammers. And yes, there are scammers in Mexico. So do your homework, don't be retarded and give your information out to people that can scam you. This is the exact same in every country. So just because one dipshit had a problem, don't buy real estate in that country. Are you freaking for real, bro? This happens every day in America. Scammers scam people all the time. This video is the reasons why I would not buy property in Mexico, and that's the first reason. Many people have horror stories like that first when it comes reason. to owning real estate in Mexico. The next reason is that I don't have the same rights as a Mexican citizen when it comes to purchasing real estate. It's even in the Mexican constitution that foreigners can't own land within 100 kilometers of a country border or within 50 kilometers kilometers of the sea. First off, that's bullshit. There's a reason why all millionaires, billionaires invest and retire in Mexico, in Cabo, in Cancun, in Puerto Vallarta, the majority of the tourist cities, and in many of the other cities as well. Mexico is one of the easiest countries that you can go in and where you can invest with Yes, this act with this trust, which is extremely safe. There is nobody I have 
ever heard of where you can come in and somebody loses their property like this. Now there are again, scammers and people who scam people that don't actually own the property. That's a different thing. If you actually know who the owner of the property is, you can of course buy the property. You will have zero issues. It's an act that was initiated that allows foreigners to own that property, but you can't own it directly in your name. You either have to start a corporation or own it through a land trust. It's not a huge deal it's to take that extra deal. step and own it through one of those ways. But what is a big deal to me, I think deal? it's a huge red flag that as a foreigner, you don't have the same I rights a as a Mexican red citizen flag. when it comes to owning property. Whereas like in the US, foreigners have the same rights as US citizens when it comes to owning property there. <laughs> Whereas like in the US, Foreigners have the same rights. Oh, bro, yeah, I'm sure. Mexican people have the exact same rights. Have you been a Mexican in America, bro? They have the exact same rights. They get treated the exact same, bro. Why I wouldn't buy a home in Mexico is the growing anti-foreigner sentiment. I've noticed this increasing over the past two and a half years or so, but it has gotten really bad in the last six months. Please don't move to our country. You are pretty welcome to come and meet us as tourists. Believe me, we are warm and welcome and kind people. But when you become a threat to our economy, that is absolutely not cool. Bro, that's because you're a douchebag and you don't do anything good for the country except for talk shit about it. Of course the people aren't gonna like you. Have you ever done anything positive for the country? Or have you just taken from the country, talk shit, wrote bad reviews about every city and restaurant you don't like like what have you ever done that's positive for the country you speak fucking spanish and you've been here for six seven years no you're not you're a virus i love this video hopefully every gringo will go back to their country after watching this that has 83 replies and 1200 upvotes you're gonna have ignorant people in every single country i don't give a shit who it is but it's guys like you that come to mexico and provide zero value you to the people and wonder why don't they like me why don't they like me because you are a colonizer basically you are coming to somebody else's country making that community worse you are not benefiting that community in any way shape or form if you were to go out and you were to you know go volunteer at some charities if you were to you know use your your social media for some good you could probably do some good shit but you're just a little bitch and with this growing anti-foreigner sentiment comes a bigger and bigger threat of nationalization or some other kind of adverse action towards foreigners. And in almost every single instance around the world where a government wants to screw over foreigners, they do it on assets that cannot be moved, like a home. And let me be clear, I'm not saying that this is a probability, but it's certainly a possibility. The richest people I've ever met are in Cabo or in Cancun or in Puerto Vallarta. Why? Because it's a great freaking investment, bro. Have this kid have bought in a house five years ago, instead of being a dipshit, he would have forexed his money. The Mexican peso is relatively strong compared to most other currencies around the world. What this means is that when you take your dollars to convert them into pesos, you're going to get fewer pesos, meaning that it will take more dollars to buy the same house compared to when the Mexican peso was weaker. For example, if you bought a home in Mexico for 2 million pesos at the peak exchange rate in 2020, you paid $80,000. But if you bought another home today for 2 million pesos in Mexico, today. you're paying $112,000. Oh $80,000 to $112,000 oh just because of a difference because, in exchange rate. Just because of a difference in exchange rate. Guess what we also have? We have what's called appreciation. That's right. Homes go up in value. Although the peso might fluctuate, your appreciation is still going to rise by within the right community, the right property, the right agent. People who own a lot of homes around Mexico who rent them out, they have a really hard time finding quality tenants. Like it is super common for like, them to rent out their super house common. and have the tenant completely destroy it or they rent out their house and then the tenant is late all the time or doesn't pay rent at all. That's super common. It's so super common. It's super common. And that never happens in low income housing in America or in Canada. It's super common. 
And so landlords, or at least the experienced landlords, are very careful about who they rent to. And if you're a quality tenant, if you can prove that you take care of their property and you pay your rent on time every single month, well then the landlord in all likelihood is going to be really generous with you and isn't going to raise your rent. Just to share a couple examples of laws that favor tenants. If a tenant is- Who the fuck is following this guy? Seriously, bro. Those have to be robots. The next reason is the very high closing costs. You'll end up paying between- <laughs> God, this guy's a freaking idiot, bro. Just like in America, just like in any other freaking country, when you go to buy a property, as long as you buy that property at a good price and then you sell it at a profit, of course you're gonna have to pay capital gains. That's why you need a good law team. That's why you need a good accountant. However, guess what? People have been buying and selling real estate in Mexico for years. In fact, every wealthy person I know is involved in real estate in some way, shape, or form. Why is that? Because the real estate market here is booming. You're either a real estate agent, a broker, a developer, a builder, you know, timeshare, hotel, something that has to do with real estate. Why? Because we have cheap labor costs, because we have a ton of land here, because it's beautiful, it's an amazing place to live, and it's an amazing place to set roots, to, to grow a family. The Mexican people are amazing. They are very welcoming. Of course, you're gonna have some bad people, but if you're a good person and you give out good vibes, you're gonna get that back. You'll end up paying between seven and 10%. That means the day you purchase your home, you've already taken about a 10% loss on your home. He's talking about the buying side closing costs. And he's saying between seven and 10%, which is completely 100% wrong. If you were buying $100,000 piece of property, little piece of land, something like this, yeah, maybe you could see 6%, maybe even 7%, depending on the property. If you use a crappy title company, there are guys out there that charge too much. That being said, on the other side, on all the properties that I typically sell, on a million dollar property, you're going to pay about three to 4% depending on how it's structured. So for example, if it was just a cash buy, you'd probably be around 3.5%. But if we were also doing some owner financing, then we're gonna be up around closer to 4% on the buying side. So on a million dollar property, you're gonna be about a million 40. That's gonna be all of your closing costs, including the taxes, including everything. And then after that, your yearly taxes are going to be 0.02%. So on a million dollar house every year, you're gonna to have to pay $2,000 taxes. Now, when you compare that to the states, like how much is it in America? It's like 10X if you get what I'm saying. One of the main benefits of living in Mexico is the fact that you can save so much money. Everything is cheaper here. Taxes are cheaper, food is cheaper, labor is cheaper. Everything is cheaper. Hence, there's more opportunity, there's better ways to make money, especially if you know how to play the game, unlike this guy. There's another YouTuber here in Mexico that is very good about knowing all the laws, and he, despite all of his knowledge and his meticulous nature, almost didn't qualify for the capital gains exemption. We received a bill in an email that said that we owed $30,000 in taxes as a part of this transaction. So Linda immediately calls the lawyer and says, hey, what?" What is this tax bill? What's going on here? And he says, ah, you know what? Um, although you have all of these bills in your name and bank accounts in your name, things like that, nothing is linked to your Mexican tax number known as an RFC. When you go to somebody else's country, you have to learn how to live life correctly. In America, it would be the exact same. If somebody moved to America and didn't have anything attached to their goddamn social security card, of course, you're not gonna be able to get a tax credit. Only because the buyer of the property agreed to delay the sale so he could get that tax ID number on his next bill. But stupid reasons like that could disqualify you from the capital gains exemption, which could cost you tens of thousands of dollars. If you forget to attach your, your house payments to your social security number, you might have some tax problems. Yeah, no, no shit, no, no shit. Real genius. The next reason is, is that 
99 times out of 100 in Mexico, foreigners don't have access to Mexican credit to purchase a home using funds from a Mexican bank. Oh, you mean foreigners that don't have credit can't get credit in Mexico? Oh, that's super bizarre because can foreigners with no credit get credit in America? Wait, no, it's, it's the exact same, I think, right? It's the exact same, exact, exact same. Exact. If you move to Mexico and you get a bank account, you get your temporary residency, which is extremely easy to get, it's the easiest country to live in. There's not a country that's more easy than Mexico. So after you get your temporary residency, you can get a bank, you can get a credit card, and you can start building credit if you like. Now the interest rates in Mexico, yeah, they're higher than in the States. It's much better to, if you have property in the States, to pull out a HELOC, you're gonna get whatever the rates are back home. Let's say they're 7.5 back home here they're going to be much higher they're going to be 10 12 percent higher u.s banks won't lend against mexican real estate so in like 90 u.s banks won't lend against mexican real estate really well it just so happens that i know a gal that'll do it in fact i know about three companies two of the basic ones here moxie and there's one other one i'll link to it but i also know a lot of independent brokers that will lend to properties here in mexico and they'll do it just like they would back home 30 years 7.5 percent fixed and they're of course they're going to hold the lien on the property just like they would back home just because you haven't done any homework just because you haven't tried to figure out a way to get shit done don't give advice on shit that you have no idea about you're a renter you've rented your whole life you've never made any money besides your dipshit youtube money let's not give the uh financial advice there buddy until you actually have some finances. The next reason is, is that it almost always makes more financial sense to rent in Mexico instead of purchase. Let me show you an example using the last house I was renting. So $1,750 to rent, or I could purchase it for $500,000, but that does not include closing costs. So after closing costs, let's call that $535,000. Real estate is what makes the most families millionaires. Why? It's going to do nothing but appreciate in value. And it really doesn't matter what country it's in. You know, obviously there's some outliers like Venezuela or, or things like this, but even these countries I'm sure will come back at some point. But in America, most people have gotten wealthy due to appreciation in their homes and keeping those homes in their family for years and for generations and for generations to come. People who have bought like myself, I bought my first house when I was 18 versus people who have spent their whole life renting. Which which group of people do you think is doing better? You can listen to this guy who lives in his car, the number one real estate agent in Latin America. Who would you rather go out and have a drink with? <laughs> I tell you what, I wouldn't want to tr travel Mexico with this fucking guy. $135,000 laying around, but let's say you do. It's not like your cost to own the home and there, you're going to have costs every single year and they're not insignificant. For example, on this particular home, the HOA fee or what they call mantenimiento is $3,000 a year. The insurance is probably gonna run you about $2,000 a year. Insurance, guess what bro? We don't have insurance in Mexico. It's not something that we need, why? Because the houses are all built out of freaking concrete. They don't move, you can't hurt them. They're indestructible. 98% of the people I know do not have insurance. If you live in a place that has bad hurricanes, you could buy some hurricane shutters if you want. It's so cheap to remodel stuff here, it's not even funny. Higher if you're in a place like Mexico City that's prone to earthquakes, or if you're in a place that gets hurricanes, and then upkeep on the house, you're probably looking at at least $3,000 a year because this is a pretty large house. It's over 4,000 square feet and there's a lot of stuff that goes wrong, a lot of stuff that needs constant maintenance. And if you don't do constant maintenance on a house, after 10 years, it's gonna look like hell and be functioning very poorly. So I think that's a very conservative estimate there. And then your property tax is gonna be another $500 a year or so. So in total, we're looking at an extra $8,000 $500 per year when you own. So $500 property tax for a $500,000 house? It's pretty damn good, don't you think? Mavilla. It's the project just down below me here. You could get these right at about when it was dirt in the 250 range. And now these are up in the 750 range just 
two years later. There's not too many places that you can, you know, get this kind of ROI on. You have to have the right developer and you have to get in at the right time. And of course, even in those developments, you have to pick the right properties because there's certain properties that, for example, in the Mavilla Pueblitas, those aren't going to rise as high as the, as the towers that have an amazing view because in Cabo, the view is where the money's at. So by the way, don't take anything I'm talking about in this video as financial advice. Did you just say don't take financial advice from you after you've just been giving us financial advice for the last 10 minutes? Uh, why didn't you tell me that in the beginning, you freaking dipshit? You could have saved us all a lot of time. Now let's take a look at this example of what happens if we rent the first year instead of using that $535,000 to buy the home. So if we rent, we will have to pay a significant amount of money, $21,000. Now that does seem like a lot of money, right? But if we take that $535,000 and invest it into something like... Just that statement right there makes me want to freaking strangle you. You're not taking into account appreciation. In every country, the average appreciation on a house, 2% month over month and 14% year over year. Wow an average of 5%. Your, the property value is going to drastically raise. Let's, let's just do a little math. We have a $500,000 house, 5%, so that is 323,000 bucks. Now that's at 5%, but actually we know that it's higher than that. It's about 7%. Now we're at a million bucks. That's a pretty goddamn good investment. Everybody who's Anybody that has any business sense knows that real estate is one of the best ways to compound your wealth, to grow your wealth. There is not too many other ways. Of course, you've got Bitcoin. Of course, you have gold. Of course, you have stocks. We could go into the you know assets versus liabilities. It just, it pisses me off when you get kids like this really have no idea about finance, about anything. The kid seems halfway smart that he's, you know, investing in some stocks. That's good for him. My point is, guys, there's no better investment than Mexico and Cabo San Lucas. This is my market. Now, of course, the other there's other markets that I don't know as much about. But in Cabo San Lucas, this is one of the fastest growing markets in the world. And Mexico in general is one of the countries on the rise. I have never in my effing life seen someone push rent over buying. There has never been a, a millionaire that has told me, hey, you should really you should really be renting because, you know, I don't know, you know. Typically house prices, who knows, man? I mean, they could just all collapse because the housing market, you know, that's nuts. <laughs> it's been a pretty unstable market since the beginning of fucking time. Are you kidding me? It's the one thing that constantly goes up. Thank you guys so much. I'm getting tired. I've seen this guy's video. I'm not one to be shy about my opinions and things like this, especially when it's something that I think very strongly of. Cabo San Lucas, the land of the free. If you guys need any help at all, send me a message. WhatsApp is always best. I will guide you through any kind of questions you might have. If you're interested in property, I can take you out and tour you on properties here in Cabo San Lucas, 60 countries in almost every city in America. I can help you guys out. Obviously, I am BK Cabo, your guide here for, for anything Cabo San Lucas. Send me a message. Again, me or my team can help you guys out. Well, I'll be out uh, counting money while this guy's uh, driving his fucking tangerine around. See you on the next video.